there are many space objects that are relatively close to Earth. At first glance, it may seem quite innocent. However, upon closer inspection, most of them lose this appearance. Unfortunately, science does not currently know of any places in space where a person could at least potentially feel good without a spacesuit. But in some places, even vehicles made of super strong material would not survive. What comes to your mind when you hear the expression real hell? Probably a picture of active volcanoes, absolute darkness, lightning and ash immediately comes to mind. But what if I told you that such a place already exists and it is only 38 million kilometers from the Earth at maximum convergence? Similar conditions prevail on Venus, the closest planet to us in the solar system, on the surface of which the Earth's spacecraft have not been on its surface for more than 30 years to understand the difference between our worlds. Let's imagine that the Earth's atmosphere consists of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 0.13% argon carbon dioxide. Thanks to this, we can breathe freely, without feeling any discomfort. But the atmosphere of Venus is 96% carbon dioxide. Once there, any person would feel the most severe suffocation, caused by hypoxia, at the first breath. But even if we learned how to overcome this problem, on the surface of Venus, people would face the following, namely an extremely high atmospheric pressure, which exceeds the Earth's by about 92 times. With such an indicator, a person would feel as if they were constantly underwater at a depth of 900 meters. If we add to this, the third aspect, which is the highest possible temperature of plus 460 to degrees Celsius, the picture of a real hell would be complete. The study of this object began in the 17th century. Galileo Galilei observed the planet with an optical telescope and found that Venus could change phases. In 1639, the English astronomer Jeremiah Horrocks first observed the planet's passage across the solar disk, and on June 6, 1761, Michaela Monosaf saw the refraction of sunlight in the planet's atmosphere. The first images of the surface were taken at the end of the last century with the help of the Soviet probes Venus 9 and Venus 10, which were launched almost one after the other. They made a soft landing on the surface of the object. On October 22nd and 25th, 1975, respectively. This is what their images looked like. Seven years later, in 1982, the Venus 13 and Venus 14 spacecraft were able to transmit the first color images of the planet taken on its surface. Unfortunately, the probes sent back were unable to provide as many detailed panoramic images. For example, the Mars rovers. The thing is that the conditions on Venus are so harsh that none of the spacecraft could work on its surface for more than two hours. The devices transmitted information to the Earth from a place where volcanoes are constantly erupting, lightning is striking. The sun is never visible through a dense cloud layer. The wind reaches a speed of 150 meters per second, and the temperature reaches 480 degrees. To date, only 30 successful launches of various spacecraft have been carried out that were able to transmit information about Venus and the last soft landing on the surface of the object was made back in November 1982. But why did we need to fly to such a harsh celestial body? Not so long ago, people were sure that life would never be possible on this planet. Venus receives twice as much solar radiation as the Earth, and therefore has always been too hot. However, in 2016, it became clear that this point of view, point of view is not completely correct. According to the latest calculations, due to the very long Venusian days, the presence of large liquid bodies of water is theoretically possible on this planet during an extra-long Venusian night, which lasts for 116 Earth days. Heat from the planet's unlit side escapes into space. If it were not for its atmosphere, 
Venus would have time to cool down a lot. But is there any chance that we will ever be able to send an expedition with living people there? At first glance, this seems impossible. But with the development of today's technologies, even the most difficult tasks are becoming theoretically feasible. The first difficulty astronauts may face on Venus is solar radiation. Venus does not have its own magnetic field in the future. This problem can be solved by creating an artificial magnetic field around the space station or interplanetary spacecraft. Most likely, human presence on the surface of Venus will never be possible due to the enormous temperatures and pressure. However, people will be able to make short-term dives from the cloud layer to the planet's surface, similar to diving in sturdy bathyscaphs to the bottom of the Earth's oceans. This would require a huge air base that could be deployed above the surface and powered by solar energy. At least, this is one of the main concepts of Venus at this time. The second theory suggests the possibility of terraforming this planet. Artificially altering the climate of Venus could lead to an increase in the amount of water, a decrease in temperature, and a decrease in pressure to at least 10 atmospheres. At the first stage of terraforming, it will be necessary to bombard the planet with icy asteroids. This will help accelerate its rotation, which will create a magnetic field and bring in large amounts of water. At the second stage, it will be necessary to lower the temperature and reduce the greenhouse effect. And this can only be achieved by getting rid of a large amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. However, it will take centuries or millennia to successfully complete this process. Despite the widespread interest among scientists around the world, Venus has remained unvisited for several decades. The reason for this is the lack of necessary funding and probable prospects for this mission. Nowadays, most of the space exploration is focused on Mars, which seems to be a more accessible target for researchers. According to today's assumptions, the future Venus D project will have to exist on the planet's surface for three hours. During this time, it will have time to take soil samples and transmit about 340 megabytes of information to the ground. The next step may be the implementation of the Venus Glob project. It will include an orbiter, a long-lived station, balloon probes, and the first Venus rover. The process of studying this object is unlikely to lose its relevance in the near future. Venus is the third brightest point in our sky, and it was with it that humanity began the era of planetary exploration using space technology. Do you think new discoveries will take place on Venus in the near future? And if so, what could they be, one way or another? The study of this planet can be called one of the most amazing and unique processes in today's astronomy, which is unlikely to leave anyone indifferent who decides to touch it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more interesting information about space and astronomy, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to like this video so will we know you appreciate our content and leave us a comment with your thoughts and questions. Thank you for watching, join us and see you soon in the depths of space.